here with the great John Anik. It's always a pleasure to get to pick your brain and talk to you about both the Hall of Fame ceremony and UFC 290 coming up this weekend. Let's start with Hall of Fame, hosting it once again. I'm sure this honor doesn't ever get old. It's amazing. It's an amazing night, a celebration of our sport. And nice to have my annual catch up with you <laughs> on the red carpet for the Hall of Fame. But I might have said this to you last year, but it's really cool for me to see these athletes backstage, yeah. how they deal with the nerves and the emotions, mm -hmm. because you would think at their core, they go fight another man or woman in a closed space. Why would it <laughs> phase them to step on a podium and address a thousand people? But it's a different challenge mm -hmm. and it really triggers their emotions. And yeah. uh, I like to see them try to deal with that anxiety backstage before they take to the podium. But it's just so special to see a guy like Jens Pulver who had to wait a long time, yeah. Jose Aldo, I get so starstruck around that dude, so the fact that he's headlining the class is pretty special for me. Uh, yes, needless to say, I'm honored to have that seat and uh, just trying to hold it down every year. Well, let's talk about some of the inductees and, of course, Anderson Silva, one of the greats. And, you know, you've, you've covered all of these fighters' careers. To, to Jens Pulver, did, were you commentating on you? No, just before my just, time. Just before, but Anderson Silva, of course. What, what have you got to say about this fighter and what he's done for the sport? So one adjective you're going to hear me say about Anderson Silva tonight is peerless. And for a time, he really was peerless. There was not a middleweight in the world that any of us realistically thought was going to go in there and beat him. And yet, Shale Sonnen almost did it, and Chris Weidman eventually did it. But most people when they begin the conversation about the greatest of all time, they do still utter the name Anderson Silva first and maybe John Jones right there on his heels. But title defenses is the most valuable currency in mixed martial arts. He had double digits as far as that was concerned. And uh, yeah, he was the man on the marquee every step of the way and he always put on a great show. And uh, he isn't here tonight, unfortunately, but uh, thankfully his son is here and uh, has some special words to say about oh, it. Lovely. Gabriel, his son that's fighting in boxing now? I think it's actually Khalil who's oh, here tonight. Right. Might lovely. be both of them, we'll yeah. see. Oh, well, that'll be special indeed. And the fact that he's other fighters favorite fighter and other fighters who have looked after I think says everything that we need to know about Anderson Silva and and you talked about Jose Aldo and you said that he had this aura about him you know you feel nervous in his presence what is it you know I wish I could tell him too without an interpreter yeah. the way I feel and sometimes things get lost in translation but we do fighter meetings with these athletes before every show and it just hits different when Jose Aldo walks into that room he's dripping with class and professionalism of course but He's just an absolute legend, and I think when I was sort of cutting my teeth and I was the number two guy and I, I was going to Brazil six times a year, I just put Jose Aldo on this pedestal. I hope to one day get a chance to call one of his title fights, and thankfully I had that opportunity. But, uh, yeah, one of my favorite fighters of all time, if I can say that. Oh, I love hearing that. And, and to be honest, upon his retirement, he was still looking fantastic, wasn't he, down at, down at Bantamweight. And, um, but, you know, when a fighter knows it's time, it, it's time. And to be honored here is, is wonderful. Um, Jens Pulver, we, we talked about as well. I think to recognize those that pioneered those lighter weight classes is something special as well. Because, look, you know, we're here at UFC 290. It's the lighter weight classes yeah. headlining the card. I think the most emotional moment of this night for me is probably going to be when I give my opening remarks about Jens Pulver, I'm getting a little bit emotional right now because anyone who watched our live broadcast when we broke the news to him on the air knows just how much it means to this individual. Like, I'm getting goosebumps when I talk about him because this distinction means a lot to all of these athletes. But you got to think there was a time where Jens Pulver, despite his incredible body of work, sort of wondered in his subconscious if this moment would ever materialize. So. I'm just so excited to see him take his rightful place in this Hall of Fame, and uh, I think it's going to be a tear-jerking speech for everybody in the building. Really happy for Jens. Rightful place indeed, and of course, I'll be remiss not to mention Robbie Lawler, Rory McDonald. It was fight of the year. It's going into the Hall of Fame in the fight wing, and I was there for that fight yeah. as well, and it's to date my, my favorite fight. I mean, talk us through that fight and why it was so special from your opinion. You want to talk about peerless. I mean, I yeah. like that it's your favorite fight. That fight is peerless. Like when I talk about the championship fights that you need to direct non-mixed martial arts fans to go watch, like that one leads the league. And one thing I just want to say, if I could, we use this fight wing as a conduit to get certain athletes into the Hall of Fame. And as much as it is about the actual fight, it's also about the particulars involved. So Robbie Lawler may never get into the pioneer era wing of the UFC Hall of Fame but he might have two or three more fights go into the UFC <laughs> Hall of Fame one day. So this is a way to acknowledge Robbie Lawler as a UFC Hall of Famer, and we use the fight as the conduit to do that. So um, we explained that to Robbie in the fighter meeting. You know, I think he was just sort of thinking we were honoring a fight from eight years ago. We're honoring the whole body of yeah. work tonight. So. Yeah, and of course he makes his last walk, if you like, this Saturday night, which I think would be sad for all of us. But when you go into a fight knowing it's your retirement fight, is there a different mindset, do you think? Do you see that in the fight? Do you do these fighter meetings, did you say? Do you think 
he's already got that one foot out the door or being Robbie, we're just going to see the Robbie that throws down every time. Yeah, no, you put that well. He's done. He's done after Saturday night. It's very rare that we have a fighter who's on the cusp of retirement actually come into a fighter meeting and close that door. He didn't leave it ajar at all. I think these are the terms in which he wants to go out. And I think the real rub, and I'm going to share this on the broadcast, it came out of our fighter meeting, but Robbie Lawler absolutely loves to train when he doesn't have a fight on the books. But at this stage of his career, when he has a fight on the books and he's in training camp, his energy isn't at the same level. And when he, that was a tell for him that it was probably time. And uh, I think he's got a good chance to go out with a win. We'll see. Okay. And he's told us that he wants to stay involved, coaching other athletes and, and sharing all of his knowledge. Just quickly as well on 290, what's the sleeper fight, the one we shouldn't shouldn't miss this Saturday night? Well, you know, we do have a rematch between a couple of light heavyweights, Alonzo Menafield and Jimmy Crude, and it's not getting nearly the shine I think that it deserves. I think Jimmy Crude, the Bendigo bomber, is a guy that really could make a run. Been a little bit underwhelming, 4-3-1, and one, I think, in his UFC career. So I want to give that fight a little bit of shine. And I would also say about this pay-per-view opener between Bo Nickel and Val Woodburn, right? Val Woodburn may close as the biggest underdog in UFC history, but he walked into our fighter meeting as a man who believes without a shadow of a doubt that he's going to go in there and shock the world and beat Bo Nickel. So I think the betting line's a little bit out of whack just based upon my fighter meeting with Val. We'll see. Yeah, of course, everyone's high on Bo, but Val's energy has been absolutely fantastic this week. Let's look at the main event then, Volkanovski, Yael Rodriguez. I mean, yeah, yeah, is something special, but it's hard to get past Volk. So in your... Humble opinion. <laughs> How do you see this one go? So Alexander Volkanovsky may have the highest fight IQ in the game, but as my best friend Dominic Cruz always says, Yair Rodriguez is one of one. There is no point of comparison for him on this entire roster. And Kenny Flory, my podcast partner, says all the time, every time Yair fights, it's like, oh my gosh, like I forgot how fast he was and he looks even faster tonight. I think he's a live underdog at plus 320. I really feel like stylistically this is, to Eugene Behrman's point, the toughest matchup for Volkanovski at 145 pounds with respect to Josh Emmett, Ilya Topuria, and everybody else. I'm excited to see what Yair can do. And uh, you want to talk about confidence gained in that interim title fight in Perth? Confidence for him is just through the roof right now. We'll see what happens. All right, my last question, because I could ask you a million questions all, all night. Um, the co-main event. Mm. The support for the Mexicans. Brandon Moreno, I mean, was insane at the press conference tonight. But he's going up against a man that's beat him twice. Brandon Moreno is a totally different package than he was back in 2018 when these two guys fought. But so is Alessandre Pantoja. And Pantoja might be the best fighter on the roster right now that doesn't have a belt at home. He's had a full calendar year to prepare for Brandon Moreno, a guy that he has beaten twice. So... Gosh, man, I have no idea who wins that fight. I know a lot of the pro fighters really like Brandon Moreno, rooted in the championship experience that he's accrued over the last several years. But uh, just two high-level coaches, Pahumpa and Safe Saud, it's going to be an epic fight. I think it goes the distance. We'll see. All right, then. Thank you so much. Go do your thing tonight and on Saturday night. Can't wait to watch. Thank, Thank you. you. Great to see you.